Okay, in this video I just want to go over um, color and how color works in Illustrator. And again, color is a huge category. We're going to just start to touch in on some of the endless possibilities. All right, so let's just draw a shape. Um, let's just draw a shape, any shape. We'll take the polygon tool. And now what's interesting too, we could double click. Well, okay. All right, so let's actually, the, the most basic way with color is to come on in, double click um, our, our fill, and we can change the color. Okay, so let's say I wanted to turn my stroke off. I would just click onto this and I could hit this little none, um, and now I do not have a color. All right, I can move this over. I'm going to make this bigger, a little bit bigger so we can see it a little bit better. Okay, and really quickly, you know, I could come on into this CMYK spectrum. Now, the reason why I have the CMYK spectrum is because I am, um, that's the mode that I'm working in. So let's say I picked this color right here. Now, my color guide is really a pretty cool thing because what I can do with my color guide is I can actually come on in. There's all of these different um color theory it actually creates the colors for us so if i wanted to work with this and i said to myself you know i really want to now have the complementary color for this i could come on in and have this very very easily so i could click and hold click now i have these complementary colors now let's say that i decided you know and now i really want to work more with value with shadows and highlights. How could I do that? Well, I could click and start to select, you know, the different tints and shades within this color. Now, whatever selected, you can see I'm clicking and I can change that color. Um, even coming in, you know, selecting little areas. Now let's take a look at some other things. So here we're starting to create this pattern um, working with the shape tool and coming on into the color guide and getting all of these different 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 rules. All right, so a triad. What does a triad mean? Well, we have the word um, three. So if we were to take the color wheel, it would be the three colors. If we were to draw a triangle and how those colors line up on the color wheel, we have analogous colors. Um, if you've taken color theory, you know, these are all different words. Analogous are colors that are close to one another on the color wheel. Um, split complements, complementary colors, colors that are opposite. So there are tons of possibilities within the color guide. Um, I love the color guide because it kind of, it's, it's a lot of fun to work and to go in and see these different, uh, you know, color palettes that and how they work together. All right, let's come back into the swatches for a minute and just go over this. Um, I addressed color swatches a little bit in um, the video on shape. Now, within our color library, and what we'll find many times when we um, when we come on over into the bottom of these floating windows, that we'll have a lot of different options. Okay, and we can come on into the swatch libraries menu, and we can see that. Illustrator has all of these different colors for us. So they have, you know, an earth tone library that we could open up. And we, if we wanted to work with any of these colors, I opened up the ice cream library um, before this video. We could come on in, we could select a metal library. And we see they're all opening up. We could select a, um, these are like the default ones. We could go for, you know, a saturated color. There's a lot of different colors within here. Now let's say that I have a color that I choose and I decide, oh, you know what? I really like this color. I want to save it over here. All right, all I would do is come on in and say new swatch. And we can see it gives us all of the numbers and we'd say, okay. And there it is, it appears right under in here. Now maybe I want to actually create a folder and I want to uh, make it a new color group and I want all these colors to be associated with this with this file. Well, I could do that and I could say, um, what would I want to say? Let's say that project one, 
just whatever name you want to give it. And then when I hover around too, I can see that these are the colors that are there. Now, let's say I could take this, I could drop it, I could drag it into that folder, all right? So I could actually keep all of these um, five, these colors with that file. Now again, as I'll say it, I said it um, in another video, but what's really awesome about um, Illustrator is that when you save a file, those colors go right with it which is really pretty cool. So I could drag, drop this. And then if I wanted to too, right, if I had this selected, I could um, have the colors come right in there with it. I believe I could, let's see, let's change this color right to here. Let's say new swatch. Okay, All right, so if I have that one selected, then the color will go right into that folder. And I know these are the colors that are associated with this project. Now, you can go, you can do all of that. You really don't even need to if you don't want to. Um, what we're going to find too, a lot of times we'll have these color, these colors opened up, and you know, if we want to minimize them, we can click that right there. Here we can see the little icons for them. We can open it back up again. We click down in here. We see we have a lot of other options within our um, swatches too. And what I always find is so many times in Illustrator, there's, and in the Adobe software, there's like three, four, sometimes five different ways to get to the same place. So pretty much you can see, you can access your swatch library through here. You can create a new swatch, a new color group, and I will leave it at that. Thanks for listening to this video on color. One more thing before we go, um, another uh, something that we might want to look at before we close up this little part here would be transparency. So what we can also do is we can, uh, you know, lower the transparency on our um, objects. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's say if I take this, I put this over top of this image right here. Okay. Um, if I was to lower the transparency, transparency, you know, we can see through it. If I click onto this and I lowered the transparency, let's say to 60, we can see, we can see it has, it's, we can see through it. Um, so thanks for listening. We'll, we'll end there.